Oh, hey, Danny's here. Hi there. Hello, Hello. Danny. How are you? I'm not bad, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Let me just turn your volume up. Is he low for me or just anyone else? All right, can you talk again, Danny? I just want to make sure I'm hearing you clear. Hi there. I'm talking now. Okay. Okay, so let me just hear your position out. So you you eat meat, I take it. Is that correct? In general, I don't eat meat because I usually don't trust where the meat's coming from, and I don't trust that um, it's being... Uh, uh, animals are being treated very well. So wait, do you eat any meat? Um, well, I, I go by the rule that in theory, if I if I if I no, if I'm confident that the meat's from an ethical source, I'm happy eating it. And by an ethical source, uh, I mean that I I'm confident that the meat, the animal, has been treated well and it's had a happy life. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you eat some amount of meat, and the meat that you do eat, you're confident that it's ethical because there's a net utility or a net happiness. Yes. Okay. And um, do you, can I just ask which farms are these from? Do you have any idea? Um. Well, I very rarely eat it because I usually don't know. But it it would be, if, for example, if I if meat was free range um mm -hmm. so which farms are these from when you do eat it because you eat it rarely but you do eat it sometimes so which i'm just asking which farm. um i don't actually know the farms but it, it um maybe well, wait. If, if like hold on if you don't know the farms then how do you know they're you just said you're only comfortable eating it if you know that they're living a net happy life. And then I asked you if you know which farms they're coming from, and now you're telling me you don't know which farms they're coming from. So how do you know they're living a net happy life? Well, I'm not 100% confident, but usually I don't. Well, you just, you just told me that you would only be comfortable eating these animals if you knew they were living a net happy life. And now you're telling me you're not 100% sure. I said I, I didn't say that I knew they were living in a uh, happy life. I said I, if I would do it if I was fairly confident. Fairly confident. Okay, but not completely confident. Okay, so then what? So what farms are these? But you don't know what farms these are coming from, right? So what farms are these coming from that you would be fairly confident? Like if you could provide me a farm, I could at least say, okay, maybe you could be fairly confident. At least you know what's going on in these farms. It doesn't seem like you actually know what farm that even is. So hang. Are you asking me for? To tell you a specific farm, um, yes, that's exactly what I've been asking. I I can't tell you a specific farm. Okay, so then my my question is, how do you know? How is it the case that you can be fairly confident to know that these animals are living in that happy life, if you don't even know what farm they're coming from? Well, usually I'm not that confident, which is that why I don't. I okay. very rarely. You said, but no, we're not talking about when you don't buy meat. We're talking about when you do buy meat. So I asked you when you do buy meat, in the cases where you do buy meat, you said you were okay of doing it rarely because you were fairly confident that they're living in a happy life. Now, when I asked you which farm these meat is coming from, you weren't able to even give me a farm. So my question is, how are you fairly confident that they're living in that utility life? Well, I, I usually just, um, well... Um, um well I in that case I probably um I I usually I, I'm just trying to think of an example when I've but in general I wouldn't have I wouldn't like it my my requirements of of like confidence to knowing when the when the meat is uh, like the animal, animals being treated, I don't think that I have I I don't I um need to go to the farm and look, see the animals to know. What's your criteria for being fairly confident that the animals have lived a net utility life? Um, 
I I'm not sure at the moment, but I guess okay. So here's probably... here's what I'm gonna propose. If if you are saying that you would only eat meat if you are fairly confident that the animals are living a net utility life, and then I'm asking you what a criteria is for you to determine whether the animal is living a net utility life, and you can't even give me an answer. I would actually just encourage you to take a pause and to not eat meat until you can come up with such a criteria. At the well, very I'm, least, even on utilitarian grounds. I'm I'm usually not I don't I don't I very rarely eat meat. But how about um, not at all? I mean like look, I'm not talking about the cases where you rarely where you don't eat meat. I'm talking about the cases where you do. So look you said you rarely eat meat. I get that. You've already said that and I understand. So in the cases where you do eat meat, the question is when are, what's your criteria for determining in those cases if the animals lived a net utility life? Now, you couldn't name me a farm. You couldn't name me any context about what the animal lived or you couldn't the contextual okay, so, situation. So what, what, how, how would you suggest? How would you suggest? That I, I, I don't know. What criteria, don't, don't, what criteria don't would you suggest? I, I, would, I would suggest you not eat it at all. I would suggest you simply stop eating it. I mean, that's my suggestion. Um, but, but this is your I, view. I'm asking on your view. You were the one who gave a criteria for determining if you're the one who said, I'm okay with eating this meat if I'm fairly confident that the theory. animal has lived a net utility life. Now, I'm just asking you, on what what's your criteria for determining whether the animal has lived a net utility life when you're purchasing meat? And you couldn't even do as much as give me a farm name. Yeah, because I, do, I don't know any farms, but I can see farms... Yeah. There are lots of farms around where I live where the ha animals are roaming around freely. Well, wait. So, so I'm the, so animals, the animals are roaming around. Okay, so the animals are roaming around freely. Is that your criteria? And what are you? Sh by the way, they're roaming around freely. You see, you see them driving by, and you see animals roaming around. You do realize, like, that's not the end all be all of how the animals are treated, right? Like, they're also put into pens. They're also kept confined. They're also, like, you're not seeing everything that goes on. I mean, my just, my simple question is, what is your criteria? Is it your criteria that you're offering on the table is just if I drive, if I drove by the farm uh, and I saw the animals outside when I drove by, that's the criteria that they have lived a net utility life? And but furthermore, that's not even what you gave me because the farms that you're buying from when you do eat meat, you don't even know that those are those farms that you've driven by. I agree. I know that, but I, I guess what they could have been farms where the the cow was just confined its entire its entire existence. You're not. You don't even know that it's the farms that you drove by. Okay. So what if it was if if the meat is free range? Okay, but you see, you see, he'll, we can, all right, we'll get to that, but you see why it's a little frustrating, because you're going into the what-ifs now, but you don't, e you're not even acting on that. You're, you're, all, I mean, you could concede this, that you're certainly, when you do rarely buy meat, you're probably going to buy meat from not these farms. Because you don't even, you have no clue. I wouldn't say that I I have no clue. I mean, I see... Okay, well, I, if you have no clue, then what's your criteria that you're using? Well, I guess that if, if I see loads of these farms around where the animals are roaming freely, then it it must be true that, that they they must be going somewhere and they must be being bought somewhere. And so I assume that, you know, the, the meat that says free range is the same, that same... Okay, so your criteria is if the meat says free range. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Now, here's here, a couple of questions I would have. So, the first thing I would like to ask is if would you say the same thing for the human context? So that if there were free range humans, and they were being farmed, and that's the way they could come into existence with the resources, would you be okay with free range farming humans? Uh, I, uh, so I've been saying this to my brother and what I've been saying is that, um, if, if I, I don't, I wouldn't agree if the humans did said they didn't want it or the humans didn't consent to being farmed and I wouldn't agree. No, if the humans couldn't consent. If the humans couldn't consent, then, I, um, 
what I said is that I, I think so. If the humans couldn't consent and they would be brought into existence and live a net utility life, would you consent to free range human farming? Um, I, I, yes, I would. However, okay. So my, my criteria for a happy human is different to that for a happy animal. For example, I think a ha an animal can be like living in field, most spending most of its time outside and be happy. But I think a human has a lot more requirements to be happy and needs to have a social. Let's say life. the human. Well, on your view, all that is required is a net, is a net happiness. Let's say the net happiness was just one point on the utility scale. So there's a net happiness one point on the utility scale for the humans that are being farmed. They can't give consent. And they're also, they're also, remember, they can't give consent. They're trade equalized in their consciousness to that the animals are mentally handicapped so that they don't have these many requirements so that they could be in the field. These humans could actually be in the field and they wouldn't have these extra requirements to having net utility. So let's say I, I, don't, that I don't agree. No, 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 no. I'm, sa I'm not saying if you, I'm not asking you what, if you think that they, that is the case or not. I'm saying if it were the case. If it were the case that these humans didn't have these extra requirements for utility, that they could actually be living a net utility life in the field, and we they couldn't give consent, would you be okay with placing them in the field and farming them and then slaughtering them if they yes, lived a net utility life? Yes, I would, but that's okay. absurd. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. Okay, great. Okay, so you understand that in principle also um your position well let me ask you this um so there are pedophiles in this world right now there are pedophiles who have a lot of money and who want to have their way with certain children and they have the ability to bring these extra children into existence and they have the ability to give these children a fairly good life as long as they fuck them in the ass once or twice so my question to you is on a utilitarian view, would you be okay with having these extra humans bred, these extra children bred, and having these pedophiles have their way with these extra children? So long as the extra money could be provided for these children to give them a net utility life. Uh, let me think about that. Because this can actually really, like, this isn't even like an offshoot hypothetical. Like, there are actual pedophiles with money who can do this right now, and they would give these children a net utility life. They have the money to do it, and that's the way they would come into existence. So, so give me more detail about this. So, what, like, how are the pedophiles? Um, putting, making these children exist. Yeah, sure. So you would agree that there's a certain amount of children that don't exist uh, because of a limitation of resources, and these pedophiles can import those resources onto people to produce additional children. However, the agreement is that these children will be produced um, for their purposes during a certain specific age range, which means that they will go to these pedophiles, the pedophiles will have their way with these children. Uh, but in return of having their way with these children, uh, the children receive money. They will receive funds from the pedophiles to live in net, such that it will come out to be, the calculus will come out to be is that the life would be just a little bit net utility. So on your view, would that be justified? What do you mean by net utility? What the same thing you meant by net utility when you first presented the justification for eating cows, buddy, my dear. I'm not sure if that, uh, what, what I would believe is a net utility life, I don't think that's necessarily compatible with being raped as a child. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. So you're saying well, I mean, if someone is raped, it is incompatible with living a net utility life? 
No, I guess I guess you could have a net utility knife. Okay, so you're backing off of that. Okay, so then the question remains. So is this something you would view as justified? Would you support the pet would you support the pedophilia? Well, you, you still haven't told me how how it how am I how is the pedophile going to bring these children into existence? Yes, by by funding the by funding their being brought into existence. So, for example, there are a certain amount of kids who aren't being brought into existence because of the limitation of resources. Now, someone with resources can give those resources for that purpose and solve that issue, and then the kid could be brought into existence. Could you explain that in terms of like? Okay, so let's say we have a man and a woman, right? So we have we have someone who's a man and we have someone who's a woman. Okay. And then we have, they have a limited amount of money. They want to have kids, but they don't have enough money to take care of their kids, right? So they have this idea. They say, you know what? We can't afford to have a kid. We can't afford to feed the kid. But Mr. Pedophile over here can help us. So Mr. Pedophile can give us some money, right? Mr. Pedophile can give some money to us and help us support their kids, us having kids. So we can make a kid. We'll be able to feed it now. We'll be able to buy it food. We'll be able to buy it baby clothes. We'll be able to buy a formula. Though the deal with the pedophile is at a certain age range, the pedophile will have to t borrow our child from us, fuck the child in the ass, and then return the child to us. Okay? And then provide some more money such that the calculus comes out so that there's just a net utility life slightly. Is that justified on your view? And I mean, I mean you, let, why is it let, so hard for you to answer this question? Because I think it could be justified. The, okay. The okay. So just then, just say yes. Why? What? You've been stuttering this whole time trying to answer this question. Yeah, because I'm trying to. I'm trying to think about. And, and just to be clear, I'm not. I'm not making fun of your okay. stutter. I'm. 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 I'm just taken aback by how hard it is for you to just accept that this is justified on your view. Sorry, I'm just trying to put my thoughts into words. It's quite difficult. Sure. It's a very. It's a very like weird hypothetical situation. But I, I think if if the child has a happy, fulfilling life, and the only way that that is possible is for the paedophile to to have his way with the child, then I guess if I was the parent, I might agree with it. If it was the only way that I could have a child and for that child to have a happy life. So you would say the right thing for me to do is to make a child, to get the child fucked in the ass by a pedophile, and then he have a, just a slightly net utility. Well, that's, yeah. But well, that's, remember, we're, we're not yeah. talking about a great, great life. We're talking about just slightly net utility. So just to be clear, you would say the right thing for me to do as a parent would be to have the child, ha take the money from the pedophile, have the child get have raped by the pedophile, and then ha have the kid just have a slightly happy life, net utility. That would be justified on your view, correct? I think it's at, at least justified if the child has an extremely happy life. No, 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 that's not what was asked. No. What was asked, what was asked of you is that if there is a net utility life, that's slightly net utility. Not What was not asked of you is if there was an extremely happy life. If it was slightly net utility, if there's a slightly above zero utility, justified to bring okay. that child into existence by having the child raped by the pedophile. And you as a parent can say, son, I brought you into existence so you could be raped by this pedophile and have a slightly net utility life. Is this, uh, this justified on your view? I think it might be justified, but I'm more confident that it would be justified if the child had a very happy life. Well, but that's I, can, I, can I ask you in response? Would you think it's justified if the child has an extremely happy life? Um, no, I would not say it's justified. No, I don't. I don't support. I don't support farming kids for pedophiles. Okay, but wh why? Why wouldn't you think it's justified there? Unless at some look at some threshold point, if you can say like the world would end if a kid wouldn't be raped by a pedophile. Um, at some point I would switch over, but 
Uh, the reason I don't is because I view a certain moral weighting on deontic principles. There's a certain deontic value in the ass by a pedophile, right? And so, that so outscales that again, the consequence. I, I didn't catch what you were saying about the deontic. Yeah, so so there's something called deontology, right? There's something called certain... There's moral weighting on my view for actions in and of themselves, okay? So actions in and of themselves carry moral weighting irrespective of the consequences, irrespective of the utility. And only if threshold T, upon which the consequences outscale the moral weighting of the deontic violations, are reached, is when I would switch over. So, no, generally speaking, I wouldn't say a net little bit of net utility would justify having your kid be brought to a pedophile and be raped in the ass. But that's just my opinion. Okay, but I guess maybe my threshold's lower than yours. Oh, it definitely is, buddy, my dude. I, I believe it. Okay. So we've, we've, we've gotten clarity on your view. I, I do appreciate your consistency. Now, um, the second lines I would like to discuss with you now that we've established that you are, you know, you're, you're pro-family of farming, you're pro-human, uh, mentally handicapped, free-range farming, and then you're pro-having your child um, being raped. Uh, let me just ask, do you, do you have children? No. Nope. Thank God. Okay. So, um, let me j just ask, um, the second point of this is that how do you know that there's a net utility on any of these farms? Well, I don't know. I can't. I can't be sure. How are you fairly confident that there's a net utility on these farms? And what it, what calculus are you using? Well, I, I'm. I usually just play it by. Ear. You play it by ear. That's your calculus. Yeah. So you're going to. <laughs> So you're going to slaughter these beings. You're going to pay for the slaughter of these beings. And you're going to say, I'm fairly confident because I'm playing it by ear. Well, I mean, I mean I'm, t I'm telling you, like, it depends on the situation. Like, I, I... Okay, we're talking about the situation. You're, well, guess, you're making yeah. the case. You're saying that you're fairly confident. Like, when you say you're fairly confident, is your criteria for being fairly confident about something playing it by ear? I mean, what are you even what considering mean, like, when you're what, measure what, when you're judging of this utility? That's that's what I'm saying. When I say by playing by ear, I'm saying I would take into account the fa factors which I'm like the information available. Okay, and what what is that information? Like, I can give you some examples, right? So, some examples you might want to take in the take into consideration are the well-being experienced by the animal, the suffering experienced by the animal the health effects of the products of the animal on humans, the environmental effects of the products of the farming of these animals on humans as well as other animals. Uh, okay, sorry, I misunderstood you. I thought you meant what what features of a, a piece of meat, which if I had bought it, what? how would I know? But your meaning... The like, question what, how, is... What's the, the question on the table... The question on the table is... When you say you're fairly confident that there's a net utility in this process where you buy your meat from. Now, we've already established that you're not because you don't know anything about the meat you're farming from. So we're going to the what if. We've already established that the way you live your life, you have no fucking clue where that meat is coming from. You couldn't even name a farm. But let's just go with the what if. So the question on the table is, what are metrics are you looking at when you're looking at this meat and where it came from? What metrics are you looking at to determine that there was a net utility involved in this process? Because there's intrinsic and extrinsic factors to this. So the intrinsic factors can be things like the suffering and well-being of the animals themselves. The extrinsic factors can be the suffering and well-being of the health effects of the products of, these, of this meat on humans and its consumers and the environmental effects. So are you taking all of that into consideration in your calculus? If no, so, I'm not. Oh, I would like I'm to just, see a cost benefit analysis. No, I care more. I, 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 it's mostly just about the animal 
and and the well-being of the animal i don't mm. i wouldn't take into account the health effects on myself i take that into account anyway because do you, I, do I you think that that's not part of the utility else. calculus do you think yeah. the environmental effects and the health effects are not part of the utility calculus they're part of well for everything i eat i i think about how how what its effect is on my health mm -hmm. and on the and on the population level as well the environment included sure okay so that is so you would say that the health effects both on your le your level and the population level as well as the environmental effects are something to take into consideration when you're looking at a process and determining if this process has a utility a net utility or not a net not utility Uh, if, if, well, no, if I, when I'm talking about ethical means, I, I guess the, the, the effect on the environment and the effect on my health, that's something I would think about for anything I eat. That, that doesn't, that's not limited to me. That could be. I'm not, I'm not saying if it's limited to me. Look, I'm asking you for a metric to say if something's ethical and I, it seems to be that you're, deter you're saying it based on utilitarian grounds, that if something is. That which is ethical, ethical is that which has a net positive yield. Now, I'm just asking you if this process, when you're looking at the utility, if determine if it's a net positive or net negative utility, if you're taking into consideration the health effects of it on humans and the environmental effects of it. Yeah, uh, well, I wouldn't, I would, I would, I'm not on humans, on myself, because I'm the one that. Wait, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Well, you're you're saying should I take into account its health effects on humans, but I'm I'm taking into account its health effects on myself, but not on okay. other people. Okay, and as I'm well as people. okay, its health effects on yourself, its health effects on anyone else you 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 have over for dinner, its health effects on a anyone else you know when you decrease the cost of production when and the the next person can buy it for a little bit. I w I wouldn't right. see it that way. I'd see that me. Me eating it is someone else. We can't. Wait, wait. If you buy a bunch of meat and you have a bunch of people over for dinner and you feed them meat, do you not agree that you would maybe having whatever health effects of that meat would have, you would be imparting it to those guests? Yeah, of course, for the people I have over for dinner. But I'm talking about uh, mm -hmm. if, if I'm eating meat, I'm making it. More and if scarce. you and if you buy some meat, don't you don't you um, provide some demand for the production of meat to decrease and you may decrease the, wouldn't you agree that you may decrease the cost for the next producer for the next consumer no i i wouldn't i wouldn't so you don't that. think that's a phenomenon that can happen i think it only happens in very exceptional cases okay. but usually the normal laws of supply and demand occur okay and the environmental effects do you take those into consideration I do, but only a bit. Only what? Okay, if 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 the meat I was eating was going to destroy the world, I wouldn't. Okay, no, no, no. We're not setting a threshold of destroying the world. Remember, don't don't shift the goalpost now. But listen, you your goalpost was net utility. Your goalpost wasn't not destroying the world, right? So we're yeah. making a judgment. <laughs> We're making the judgments on if it's going to result in a net utility. We're not making a judgment on whether it's going to destroy the world. Don't get okay. slimy with okay, me. Fine. Don't loop. It's too early to lube up. Come on, <laughs> listen. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah, I would. I would take into account the the um, environmental. Okay. Good. Thank you. You taking account. Okay. So, do you have a cost benefit analysis to determine that there's a net utility by taking into account the environmental effects and the health effects and the well-being and suffering on the animal? Are you able to provide such a calculus? No, because I kind of divide them up. So, with the health effects on people, I, I, I or, or on myself, I. I basically, you just take into account my understanding and think about my diet and how it's affecting my diet, because this is something I'm eating. And um, does that commiserate into utility, whether negative or positive? 
yeah, because if I think that something's healthy, then then I why can't they be something? To eat it. If they all can, if they all, and does the environment affect something utility, whether negative or positive? Yeah, but I, I mean, then why I, I can't don't... it be summated at the end of the day? Why do they need to be split up? If they all commiserate into the same unit, then why can't the same unit be summated at the end of the calculus? I guess they are summated, but Great. I don't do it consciously. Great. So, are, so then provide me with the cost-benefit analysis then. Well, I, I'm saying like I, I guess I summate them like when I'm deciding what to, if, what to buy in a shop. I would Great. So provide me with the cost-benefit analysis. Show me the summation. What do you mean by that? Well, you, I'm ask, you're saying you're very conf, you're saying you're fairly confident, right? You're telling me you're very confident that this process is generating a net utility, a net benefit utility. Now, I just asked you, what are the things you've considered? We've already gone through the fact that you have no clue the meat you buy from has, has any net utility at all because you don't know what even farm they come from. But looking, let's ignore that. The thing is, I'm asking you what you're considering. Now, you said you're going to split them up. We've decided that you're not going to split them up because you're going to summate them after because they're the same unit. They commiserate into utility. Now, I'm just asking you, how is it that you're fairly confident there's going to be a net positive utility when all these things are summated? Can you show me some kind of calculus? Can you show me some kind of calculation that shows a net positive utility? Can you see some kind of metric? No, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a spreadsheet. I, I Do you have anything? Do you have anything other than I'm just winging it? Well, I, I just use my gut feeling. Gut feeling to be yeah. fairly. So what? So, oh. OK, hold on. So so what determines whether I can be fairly confident is a, my gut feeling. Yeah, I mean, when I when is this it, like a form like, of a non inferential justification. Do you literally every time you make any decision, you get out a, a pen and paper and, and sum up some numbers? Of when I'm making a decision that, about an industry that slaughters millions of sentient beings, yes, hang I would on, expect to see hang some on, kind of calculation or justification talking. if I want to make the case that there's a net. Yes, you're, and I think you're saying, and I think billions, billion, 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 if not effect. millions. Yeah, but we're talking about environmental effects. We're talking. No, we're effects. talking about all. No, excuse me. We're talking about all of it. We're talking about. Remember, I gave you the things to summate. It wasn't just environment. It was the well-being and suffering of the animal. It was the health effects of the product. It was the environmental effects of the product, and they all commiserate into utility. So, the yeah, question. But, I, mean, but, I mean, I don't like. Do you literally do? Uh, okay, uh, buying it, almost anything has an environmental effect, and if you're eating it, it has a health effect. So for everything that you buy, which you eat, do you perform a cost-benefit analysis to summate no, the I don't effects take, of the I environment don't take and your the, the effects of your health? I don't take your view. You ask me that question. I don't. I never presented a utilitarian view. You're the one coming in here presenting a utilitarian view. Of course, I'm going to expect you to. And you're not only presenting a utilitarian view. You didn't come here and say, you didn't come here and say, I'm a utilitarian. I'm presenting a utilitarian view. And I'm agnostic on whether there's a net utility of the products I consume. You came here as a utilitarian and you said, I am fairly confident that there's a net utility on the products I consume. And that's the justification for the slaughter of these animals. Now, I'm just asking you, by what metric or what criteria are you justified in believing that you're fairly confident or have, being fairly confident that there's a net utility? And all you had to say is that your tummy has a feeling a certain way. Well, this is how I would do it, okay? This is how I would analyze it. I would, I would think, okay, is this um, item... It, would I enjoy it enough for it to uh, outweigh um, the the effect it might have on my health if it if the effect is negative, and does it away outweigh the environmental damage it will do? And does is the is the animal also ha ha having a happy life? Yeah, so you would you would commiserate the three of them. You say, okay, is there what's the utility value of the well being versus suffering of the animal? What's the commiserate what's the utility of the health effect versus your taste bud pleasure um which by the way when we look in when we look in terms of the health effects we can look at that things like diabetes hypertension we can look at diseases that are linked to these things for that will affect you for quite a long time and have 
all sorts of com comorbidities. So I can argue on that level too, that that in and of itself will be a utility drain, but I don't think I need to. And then the environmental, if 90% of the radiative forcing comes from just cattle. So the question on the table is, you're telling me that you, if one would outweigh the other, all you're saying now is, well, if, if my taste bud pleasure would have well-being that would outweigh all of those utility drains, then it would be justified. Well, I agree with that. That's what a utilitarian would say. My question is, have you provided any calculation? Have you done any work to determine if that is in fact the case for the meat that you buy? Uh, what it determine if what is the case? Okay, so the question, so remember, you came in here, you said you were a utilitarian and you said that you were fairly confident that this process generates a net utility. Now, I'm bringing the different factors that are either utility benefits or utility drains. One factor that's a utility benefit is your taste bud pleasure. Wonderful. One factor that's a utility drain is the health effect outcomes, such as increased risk of uh, diabetes, increased risk of hypertension, uh, increased uh, for diet switching. There's a statistically significant increased risk of all-cause mortality. So, and then there's in the environmental effects of the process itself. So my question is, how is it that you're confident that your taste bud pleasure will outweigh the utility, the utility drain of all these other factors? Have you done any sort of calculation? Have you done any sort of data crunching? Like what, what are you doing to de make this determination? Because you said you were very fairly confident of this. I, no, what I said was I was. I would say I would eat meat if I was fairly confident that. Yes, and you do eat meat, right? So you said you would eat meat if you were fairly confident. You said you do eat meat rarely, but in the cases where you do eat meat, I'm take. I'm presuming that you're fairly confident, right? Because you said you only would eat meat if you're fairly confident. If I was fairly confident that, that animal was good, yeah, that I had a good well, life. I wasn't. Well, wait, 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 wait. If you, the animal was treated. Well, or if you're fairly confident that there was a net utility? I was fairly confident if the animal had a, had a good life. Okay, so now you're changing your view. Now we're not utilitarian I didn't, I didn't anymore. Change my, I didn't change my view. Wait, are you, you, didn't you say you were utilitarian? No. I didn't oh, okay. So you were not utilitarian. So even, even if there's a net utility drain... Even if there's a net utility drain on your view, then there you would still be justified as long as the animal had a good life. Is that correct? Um, I, 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 I guess is it justified as in if, is it immoral to do that if there's a net utility drain? Not necessarily. Okay, I'm I'm a little confused on your view now. Okay, so I w I just want to get clarity on what your view is. So, is it your view? What do you have a normative theory? Let me just ask you. I don't know. Do you know what a normative theory is? Maybe. Nope. All right. So, a normative theory is a theory on what makes things good or bad or right or wrong. So a utilitarian is someone who says it's the utility or well-being versus suffering. The actions are either good or bad, depending on the consequences. Of, and the specific consequence in question here is the utility or the well-being. So if there's a certain amount of well-being produced that is net greater than the suffering, then a utilitarian would say that would be justified. The action would be justified. Now... When you say when you say the cow had a good life, I'm I'm presuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you mean the cow experienced more well-being than suffering, or do you mean good in some other way? Just what does it mean when you say the cow had a good life? I I I'm com I'm more comfortable if the cow has like I'm comfortable if. If I know the cow has had a happy life and a genuinely happy, okay. fulfilling. Okay, so there's more happiness than sadness. Is that the is that how we're how we're doing it? Yeah, but I okay. I, I think it's really hard to put a like. Now the question the question is in your calculus are you considering are you considering the happiness drain on the external factors such as the environment or the health outcome?
Or are you just saying just it, all that matters is this cow? It doesn't matter no matter what the environmental effects are, no matter what the health effects are. In my calculus, all that matters is the calculus with respect to the cow. So for me to decide if that's immoral or not, yes. That I just care about the cow. On your view. Okay, wait, hold on. So there's like, let's say we were in a situation where it would destroy the entire planet. You already said that you wouldn't do that, right? Uh, yes. Okay, but that contradicts what you're saying now. And you just said it only matters with respect to the cow. So if it destroyed the whole planet and it didn't destroy the cow, you would you say that it would be justified or not justified? It wouldn't be justified if it destroyed. Okay, well the now you're contradicting yourself. Do you see? Do you see? No, it? I'm not. I'm not. Okay, contradicting I, I can. All right. So real quick. So first we went through this. You said that you would consider everything. You would summate everything. Okay. The second time you want you when I showed you that that's problematic because of all the utility drains, you went back off of that, and then you said, "I'm only going to consider it with respect to the cow. The only thing that matters, whether it's justified for me or not, is whether the cow is happy or not." Then I gave you an example: if the cow is happy, but the entire world is destroyed except for the cow, would it be justified? Now, if it is your position that the only thing that matters is if the cow is happy, and not anything extrinsic to the cow, then you would say that is justified. But now you're saying that that's not justified. So do you see the contradiction? You're saying it, it is and it is not the case that the only thing that matters is the cow's happiness. That's P and not P. I, I, look, I, I'm just like, I don't know. Because when I'm, I, I, I really don't really understand what the question is. Okay. So the question is when you're... Look, I'm trying to get at is what are you using? What are you using to determine whether actions are ethical or not? Now, you gave me an answer in this context. You said what determines if it's ethical or not is whether the cow had a net unhappiness. Now, I asked you if you would consider any extrinsic happiness on others, such as sex or health effects. And you said, first you said yes, but then you changed your answer and you said no. And you said all that would matter is whether the cow is happy or not. So then I gave you an, a hypothetical. I said, let's say the cow was happy, but everything around the cow would be tortured or destroyed. If it is your view that the only thing that matters is if the cow is happy and nothing else matters, in the, nothing else factors into the calculus, you would say, yes, that would be justified if the entire world was destroyed. But then you said, no, that's not, I wouldn't be justified. So what you are saying is, it is and it is not the case that the only thing that matters is the cow's happiness. Well, the thing is, that if, the, if the world isn't, if the world is destroyed, that's a categorical thing. The world is either destroyed or not destroyed. Whereas usually the environmental effects are not categorical this is, tan this is tangential it's, 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 this this is this is just tangential look, it's not tangential because look, if it's if it if it produces a small amount of greenhouse gases then that's different i'm not i'm not suggesting world. that the that what's happening in the real world is destroy is going to destroy the world that's just no, tangential. I, I, I know you're not suggesting that but what i'm it's saying is that you were offered a question you were offered a question. You the, the you were offered two questions. The first question was on your view is the only thing that matters in this calculus is if is the cow's happiness versus unhappiness. And you said yes. You said that's the only thing that matters. And then I asked you, let's say the cow was happy, but the entire world was destroyed. Would that be justified on your view? And you said no. Yeah, well, of course, not, it's, it's why, implicit you that when, when you're asking me, uh, you, usually when I when I buy, if if I bought something, it doesn't result in the world being destroyed. I, so I, I understand that. That's account. why I said. That's why I specifically gave you a hypothetical in which the world was destroyed, and I didn't say. So that, that hypothetical is different the to the hypothetical bicycle. you gave me when I'm just normally okay. buying something. Okay, look, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna spell it out again. Look, you were asked. You were asked, is the only thing that is taken into the consideration, the calculus, is if the cow is happy versus unhappy? And you said yes. Now you were asked a question in a hypothetical scenario, if the cow was happy, but the entire world was destroyed, would that be justified on your view? And you said no. Yeah, and that's a different hypothetical scenario. Okay, but, oh, wait a minute. But you said, 
but you said the only thing that matters on your view is whether the cow is happy or not. Okay, so... Are you going to say yeah, it's only whether I, I the cow is happy in, or not in, in certain contexts and not others? In general, if, if you ask me what will I take into account, I don't think... I don't need to list will it destroy the world. It's implicit that, of course, if something destroys the world, I won't do it. So what? So you do take things into account. Well, look, if you would care about it, if it would destroy the world, then it is not the case that you only care about whether the cow is happy or not. Do you okay, agree sure, with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I care okay. about it if it destroys the world. Okay. So you care about the other. Okay. So do you care about any environmental harm that doesn't destroy the world but harms the world? I. I mean, I. I don't. I don't use. I don't. As it, I don't see that as equivalent to whether the, whether a, a cow is harmed or not. I didn't ask you if it was equivalent. I asked you if you took it into consideration. And um, I I do. Okay, uh, so we're, so that we're, so then wait a minute. If you do, then we're we're out of that position now, where you don't can you because you told me before you did and you only took the cow's happiness into consideration. So now we're on a different view now. Now we're on a view where you take the cow's happiness into consideration and you take environmental effects into consideration. Do you also take health effects into consideration? Yes, I do. Okay, so now we're, on, now we're taking... Okay, great. So now we're back to the original question of show me your calculus and because they, they all summate into utility all, or happy. They, I can use the word they summate into happiness if you don't want to be a utility. So they all summate into some amount of happiness. So when you say you're fairly confident that this process produces a net amount of happiness, I'm just going to ask you, what calculus have you done? Can you show me that? Well, I, I can try and explain to you a scenario in which it would, it, I, I would be fairly confident. I didn't ask you of, to present a hypothetical scenario. Look, you, you're eating meat. Now, I'm, my table for you is when you eat meat, you say you you would eat meat if you were fairly confident that it would result in a net positive happiness. The question on the table for you is when you do eat meat, are you fairly are you actually fairly confident that it will result in net positive happiness and if you are, what is your calculation for that? I mean, I'm I'm fairly confident, but not not Okay, so by what by what metric are you fairly confident? Can you show me some kind of calculus by what metric you're fairly confident? Well, I, I would, I guess, I would decide what are my priorities. My priority to eat something nice, and then I'd think about the price of what I'm, I'm paying for, and I would make sure it's ethically sourced. And I would, you know, like take into account if it's, you know, really unhealthy or not. And you would take into account the environmental effects. Yeah. Okay, so can you show me your calculus for that and how you're getting to a net summation of a net positive happiness? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you mean by show you my calculus. Well, look, I mean, you're, these, all, all of these things are metrics, right? Like, so for example, there's a, certain, these, there's a certain amount of environmental harm that things, different things produce. There's a certain amount of unhealthiness that different things produce. There's a certain amount of risk for different diseases that these foods can have. There's a certain amount of well-being a certain amount of, oh, sorry, happiness versus unhappiness that different farms would produce on these cows. So, and they all can commiserate into a certain amount of happiness. And you could even, you can multiply that different happiness rate by the capacity of the different being to experience happiness. So I don't care which metric you use. You can use synapse counts or neuron counts for the differential neuron counts for humans versus cows, if you want to factor that in. But there's some sort of calculus there that to be done to show that it's actually ends up in it to be fairly confident that there's a net positive. So how are you determining? Okay. 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 Right. Let, let's, let's start with the happiness of the cow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting the cow from ethical source. So I'm, I'm sure that, well, I, I'm fairly confident that that's positive. So that's going to be, how do positive. you know that? Okay. Wait, how do you know that? Well, I don't know for sure, but this... no. How do you? How are you fairly confident of that? I mean, you're pre you're present. You're te you're telling me like 
Could you imagine if there's an industry you... that's slaughtering be- the slaughtering beings and says, "Hey, don't worry about it. We're ethically sourcing them. They have they can walk outside a certain amount." Like, how do you know the what Sorry. kind of life they're living? Sorry, I, I I don't I don't know I don't know what. How are you this confident? How are you fairly confident what life they're living? Are we talking about how we go, how am I summating these things? Or no, we we're talking about no. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about with the specific the specific scenario of the quote sourced cow. So, okay, so how do you know that these farms that are marketing their meat is ethically or free range or whatnot? How do you know that they're living a net positive happiness life? These cows. I mean, five minutes ago we were talking about how we how 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 am I summating all the different factors okay but then you but then then we're going but yes we can we did talk about that that's right but then what you said was here's how i would go about that and then you went by saying okay in this one atomized case in this one factor i'm pretty sure this one factor comes out to a positive and then i said well if you're pretty sure how do you how are you pretty sure this one factor comes out to a positive that's not a question of asking you to summate it. That's a question of in this individual variable how are you fairly confident that variable comes out to a net positive Okay, right. So that's the question. On so the, the question, the question is, how am I sure that the cow has had a happy? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're asking me? That that's what I'm asking you now. And I, I've, I've told you before. I would play it by ear, so I would use the information oh that's God. available to me. Come on, dude, play it by ear. Like, could you just? I'm just gonna have a plea for intellectually honesty. Intellectual honesty at this point. When you when you are asked how do, how is it that you have this standard of fairly confident in something and someone like imagine if you were having this conversation with someone else on a position you disagree with them and he said you know what i'm fairly confident that you're wrong and he's like oh and you're like okay well by what metric are you fairly confident that i'm wrong and he said to you well you know i just play it by ear like is this something I mean, you would accept and be like oh okay yeah you're in right in that case in that case i have the information available to me to tell you why I Great, think you're provide, wrong. Provide provide the information then. That's what I've been asking for. The uh, so again, so what calculus is being done to determine whether there's a net positive happiness versus unhappiness for these cows? Okay, so that's not really calculus because I'm not adding and and subtracting. Sure, uh, are these things are these things not scalar? Are these things what are the no, are these things scalar. binary? Are these things uh, are states of can, can wait a minute. Can a being have more well-being than another being? Can a being have more happiness than another being? Yeah, but I don't think you and can... And can a being have even more happiness than that? Sure, but... Okay, but... so these things can... These things, these things aren't like this just binary happy or not happy. They're additive, but it's also... Okay, the, great. I don't think that you can great. break so, down and, and someone's well-being into, into like a load of different... What are you do- using to determine whether the cows have a net positive or a net happy life? How are you de- determining this? As in, how would I practically or how would I theoretically? How are you... When you, you told me that you rarely eat meat and when you eat meat, you are very confident the cow had the life. So I'm asking you, what are you doing to determine... To, if you could be fairly confident that the cow had a happy life. That's the question. And so far, all you've said was that I play it by ear or I have a gut feeling. Look, Is there anything else you have? I, I, I don't know if you're, t- you're asking me, like, what are the practical steps I take to, to make sure the meat is do you do is that anything? Do you do anything? Do you do anything? Let me ask you this. Do you do anything other than say I play it by ear or I have a gut feel? Are you asking me, do I play it by ear or do I do, do anything? You, when other you than say, by listen, ear? listen, when you say I only eat meat, I eat meat rarely, and when I eat meat, I would only do it if I'm fairly confident that the cow had a You have any way of determining that you could be fairly confident that the cow had a net happy life other than you saying, I play it by ear or I have a feeling in my tummy? It's not that I have a feeling in my tummy. It's I You said you had a gut, okay, a gut when feeling. I, when, I, when I say I play it by ear, I, I, I mean I use information available to me. Okay, so what's the, what information? Well, I, I guess if it 
one piece of information is is the meat free range. What do you As mean when if, okay? What if, do you mean if, when you say free range? Well, if if it, for example, if the meat is labeled as free range in a supermarket, mm -hmm. that's a piece then, of information. What? Yeah, but what does that mean? Do you know what it means when it's labeled free range? Do you know like what what that what that entails? No, I don't exactly. But so you have no is, idea what. Wait a minute. So when you say I one piece of information is that it says free range and you're it has that label yeah, I actually have no idea what the hell that is. Wait, wait. How is that information if you have no idea what any entailments are from it's, that it's label? It's still information because it's diff I know that that's different to not free range meat. I, I well, yes, there, there is some well, that's if, yeah, that's that's trivial information. One it's has a label that says free range, one doesn't have a that, label. I you understand. Except that that's information. Okay, yes, that is info. Yeah, you're right. That is information. One Thank has you. a label, one does not have a label. I agree. But the question on the table is how does that relate to whether you can deduce any sort of, make any inference about whether the cow had a net happy life or not? What are the entailments of free range? What does that mean with respect to the cow? I understand it's information that one has a label and one doesn't. I'm pretty sure when, le me when meat is labeled free range, it means that the, the animals are. are Free and roaming around free. They're free I'm, and roaming. Are, are you sure about the... that? Are you no, sure? I'm not, sure? I'm not sure. Do you know? Have you looked? Have you done any work to look into that? What free range means? Yeah, I've heard that it's not always like that. Oh, it's not always like that. But it's usually but like that. Sure Do you that have you what? Limited, have you done any work to this? Have you done are. any work to determine if this meat makes any form of a difference whatsoever, or if it makes like this slight difference? Because, I mean. Look, I'll be honest with you. I haven't gone full a uh, full deep dive on free range, but from what I've heard, I've heard differing sides. I've heard that free range is just this tack on thing that they label to make more money and they don't actually really treat them that differently. Maybe they let them out for a few extra hours. So I've heard different things. I don't know yeah. who's right and I don't think you know either. Well, I I that that's the thing. Like I I don't you, I'm not sure and you can't be sure of anything. But I, I not sure. You're saying I fairly confident. How are you answer. fairly confident? I asked you. I asked you when you see this label, what does it make you fairly confident of? You fairly confident of, and you said you have no idea. But it's information because it's a label. So then the question again, I'm going to circle back. When what are you using to determine that you could be fairly confident that this cow had a net positive happy? Life? Yeah, and I, and I think. First of all, is the meat free range, and does it seem to be from? No way! Wait, we already went over free range. We already yeah, went over free range. You were, you didn't, a... you weren't able to draw. You weren't able to tie that into well. You weren't able to tie that into happiness. You actually don't know what the hell that that means at all. And neither do I. Neither does anyone. I do. Unless no, someone no, wants no, to pipe I'm, up. I'm saying, but like you know, I'm not 100 percent sure. Not 100 percent sure. How are you fairly confident? Can you provide any sort of source? Can you provide any sort of material that would lead to be fairly confident? Or are you just going to say that when I look at and I see free range, I'm winging it, or I have a feeling in my gut? No, I, I just th I think that. Well, my reasoning is that you know I see everywhere there are loads of fields with animals roaming free. And I also think that if something has a free range label, it can't just write that label there to make more money. If it, the cows aren't free range, they have, they have to follow some sort of regulations to be allowed to have that label. I'm fairly sure that that's true. So there must be some sort of uh, standards that they have to adhere to, to be, have the right to label their meat as free range. So actually, I do think that it is useful information to have a label that says free range. What are the standards for free range? I assume they're to do with the animal being free. Because here's the thing. I, what I, I'm, I reading, think I'm reading, it's not a battery farm. It's a, it's a non-battery yeah, So what farm. I read is that it sort of is. What I read is that on a typical farms, they can spend much of their time confined to pens, just as animals on conventional farms. Um, U.S. Department of Agriculture requires animals on so-called free-range farms to have access to outdoor areas. It doesn't specify how much time they must be allowed to spend outside or how much space they could be given. 
So, and I don't know that this is right. I don't know who's right. Wait, do you know that, is there a specification on the amount of time these cows can be, have to be let outside? I don't know yet. I'm, because I'm reading that there isn't. In the U.S. or in Europe. In any country. Can you give me any country where free range means anything like that? Which country are you from? I'm from the U.K. Okay, so in the UK, when it says free range, can you provide, do you know what that means? Is there any amount of time that they have to spend outside? Is there any quality standards that they're setting differently? Or is it just something that says free range? There, I'm, I'm almost certain that there are standards. Are you, okay, you're almost certain there are standards. Okay. So could, and if we look, you're, I want to get well, that on record. So you are almost certain. What, and then what, the, what are those standards? Okay, here here we are. Um, if you were almost certain, why are you looking it up now? Well, I'm certain there are standards. I don't know what the standards are. Okay, so what are yeah? So what are the standards like? And let's let's just ask a few basic questions. How much time is the does the cow is the cow required to be outside roaming in the um, what are the requirements for the pen size that the cow is going to be confined in? Okay, here, uh, my, uh, someone's written, added some information onto the thread, so I'm just reading it. Are either of those questions answered? Which question? Question number one, are, is there any standard of time in which the cow is required to roam the field or that the cow is required to not be confined? Well, apparently most, most cows and sheep are reared outdoors for part of the year. And That's not an answer to the question. So the question, I'll repeat the question. So the question is when something says free range, is there any standard or requirement for the amount of time a cow has to not be confined. That's question number two. Question number two is, is there any standard for the measurements of the pens in which the cows are confined? I honestly have no idea. Okay. That, that, that's so, I, I, I'm, I'm being honest right. here. Like, I honestly okay, good. No, I appreciate, I appreciate you being honest that you have no idea. Okay. So look, I would encourage you to get an idea. I would encourage you, before you start saying that you can be fairly confident about the happiness of these animals, I would encourage you to do a little bit more digging, and I would encourage you to do a little bit more than just saying, I have a gut feeling, I have uh, playing it by ear, I drive by and I see some cows outside in the field. I would, I would encourage you to get an idea. before, And in the meantime, I would encourage you to stop eating this meat that you rarely do. I would encourage you to stop eating it until you have an idea. I, I guess, I mean, if I was going to eat meat all the time, I would definitely do the research. But okay, since if I, you were going to eat meat usually... some of the time, you should also do the research. Well, I mean, the thing is, the fact that I'm, I, I rarely do it means that if, if I'm having a ne negative impact, or I'm only doing it a smaller so well, that's it, mathematically better. Yeah, sure. And if just like in the pedophile case, if someone rapes one kid, it is mathematically better than if they're raping a hundred kids. I agree with you. Yeah. That and, being and said, because, I would because I I don't know. I'm not certain about these things. So that's the reason why I do. So, it. so then not. then you should then I would I would I would rec recommend you not do it at all until you get certain or get more confidence more, or at least something more tangible than I have a gut feeling. I think that's overly precautionary. You, those were your words. Your words were, I am playing it by ear. Quote, I have a gut feeling. No, no, no. I, I'm saying it, it would be overly precautious to abstain completely unless I have all the information. That I... Why was that overly precautious? Because I think... You're that... talking about slaughter, paying for the slaughter of sentient beings. So why is it overly precautious? Well, if you're if you're hinging a justification on slaughtering sentient beings, why why would that be overly precautious to actually have some kind of fucking idea that you know what the hell is going on? 
to relate to your justification that you're putting on the table. Why is that overly precautious? Because I, I, I don't know. I, I guess that I'm, I, I, I think I, if I think an animal is, has had a good life and I'm not sure, then it's a risk if I do it, but that's why I do it less. So then now we're going to go in circles. So, okay. So then the question is by what, how are you fairly confident that the animal has had a good life? I'm saying my confidence is low, but it then... well. No, oh, wait a minute. Now, okay. So now your confidence is low that the animal started this conversation. You said that you were fairly confident that the animal had a good life. Now you're saying you're. Yeah, it's, all, it's all relative, isn't it? Well, wait a minute. Are you? Is it the case that you're fairly confident that the animal had a good life, or is it the case that your confidence is low that the animal had a good? Life? Well, I'm, what I'm saying is that in general, the confidence is low. And I only do it when my confidence is higher. As in Great. So in the context, in the cases where you do do it, what is your metrics for determining your how you can be fairly confident that the animal had a good life? I, I can't tell you because it depends on the situation. Okay. So in, that's why I specified the situation, buddy, my dude. I specified in the context where you do do it. What metrics are you determining that the animal had a net happy life? I don't know. Uh, I I guess, like I said, I use the information available to me. But okay, you know. and what information is that? We already went through or the the label free range and and how a, much of a disaster that was for as far as information was concerned. Is there any other information that you're using? Well, I mean, I mean, it, it looks like there are lots of requirements for free range. So I, okay, I, so go wait, wait. Sure. So then, um, then let's go through them. What are the requirements for free range in the UK? Is there a certain, so I'm going to ask the same question. Is there a certain amount of time that the cows are required to not be confined? Is there a certain amount of space that the cows have to have when they are confined? What are, what, yes. what are the requirements? I'm at, what are the requirements of free range in the UK? This fucking interrogating guy is such a weenie. You're a fucking weenie, dude. Relax. What's up, Josh? How you doing, buddy, my dude? I'm okay. I don't feel like a weenie. I don't either, my my dude. How you been? Well, you should, because <laughs> you sound like you're fucking unhinged. <laughs> um, it's all good. I love you, Josh. I do. I look. I I think thing is i don't know what the regulations are i'm pretty sure that there are regulations and i think for me that's enough for me to okay use. so listen listen look i i just asked you what the regulations are you're we, we've established you don't know what the regulations are but you think there are regulations but again just because there are regulations it doesn't mean that you know that those regulations generate or somehow entail a net well-being state or a net happy state for these cows if you don't know what the regulations are like a regulation can be anything then just because you know that there are regulations that regulations are out there i don't see how you're linking that up to any sort of inference about the happiness state of a cow if you have no idea what the regulation is i think you can you can still it can still change how confident you are Okay, so let's say the regulation, let's say the regulation was that the cow needs to be outside and not confined for at least one minute. That wouldn't differentiate it from conventional farms. So I wouldn't be able to say that that's any symmetry breaker. Just because it would be a regulation. Yeah, but, but if my, you have my, no idea my intuition is. tells me that that's not the regulation. Okay, so you're just the regulations intuiting. are higher than that. Okay, so it's it's an intuit. You have no idea what the regulation is, but you're intuiting that there's some sort of regulation that. What well, do you ends think up... on the on, on the balance of probabilities? Do you think it's greater than one minute per year no, I or have, less than I one have minute? I have no per idea. Year? I would actually. You don't. You have no idea and... whether it's greater or less than one year. I have. One I have no idea year. if it exists at all. I'm I'm reading some sources that say it's zero. That it that it's it actually isn't even there. I'm reading some sources that all cows are let outside 
I'm not. A- I'm asking. The question is, the question is again. The regular when you something says free range, what does that entail? What are the requirements of free range? What has to happen in order for someone to be able to label something free range? Is there a time limit? Is there a pen size? Is there what? What does it mean? And you're saying you don't know, but you're saying you're intuiting that it's, there's something about it that makes it so that there will be a net positive happiness. Yeah, I'm, f- I'm fairly yeah. sure there are, are like there would be regulations which make free range have some sort of meaning beyond. No, I didn't ask you. That's not what I was asked. I, I'm not asking you if it makes them have some sort of. Meaning. I, I'm asking you if you can have some be fairly confident that if something's free range, it would have a net positive happiness. Those are two different things. So, for example, free range might have more happiness with respect to conventional, but if it's still not a net positive happiness on the view you presented, it still wouldn't be justified. That's true, but I imagine it is. Okay, so you're you're imagining it is. But can we but you didn't say that I'm imagining when you came here. You said I'm fairly confident. So do you have anything other than your imagination to present? Or are you just gonna say you imagine it? Why can't you be both? No, it could be both. So I, I'm interested in what I'm interested in is the non imaginative calculus. Do you have any sort of data, any sort of metric that you can put on the table? Because you said you said when you came in here, you're fairly confident. I asked you many times to present something or present a criteria to determine how no, you I could said I would, I would eat meat if I was fairly confident. And you also said that you do eat meat. So presume, yeah. I'm, presuming, I'm presuming here that when you do, in the cases where you do eat meat, that you are fairly confident. Well, I, I think I've eaten it in the past when I should have not, probably. I don't know. Like I, I'm saying, in, in theory, I would eat meat. But right, you're, you're right. You... No, I should pro- I should probably read more, but okay, great. I, that's I mean, that's what I'm. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, fine. I I accept that I should read more about it. You should I read, know. and I, in the meantime, I yeah, that before, sure. But and in the meantime, in the meantime, I would just encourage you to be cautious about paying for the slaughter of these beings uh, when you have no when you, by your own admission, uh, are not fairly confident anymore. I will be very cautious. Great. Okay, cool. I would encourage you not to do it. Uh, you can provide something more substantive than either it's my gut feeling, it's my intuition, or I'm just winging it. But you, you want me to persuade you that I know, or do you want me to know? Well, look, when you came here, you said that you were fairly confident that the cows are living in that happy life. Now, when wow. I asked you how you can be fairly confident of that, you, we've spent, we're, we've gone about this, I don't know, are we an hour into this now? We've, we've spent about an hour. Oh, yeah, did I just confirm the consequent? Oops. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So wait, let me, let's just, let me go back to that then. If I'm confident I eat meat, I eat meat, therefore I'm confident. Okay, so now let me just ask you the question. When you eat meat, when, in the context where you do eat meat, are you eating meat only when you're confident? Or do you have other reasons? That, that's what I believe is ethical. Wait, so wait, wait, wait. That's not what I asked. So what, hold on, hold on, hold on. So when you, when you eat meat, are you eating meat when you're only, when it is only, only if you are confident that, you, only when if you are fairly confident that the cow had a net positive life? Or do you eat meat for other reasons other than that? What, what do you mean for reasons other than Well, look, you, you, said, you said that I would eat meat if I was fairly confident that the cow had a net positive, the net happy life. So my question is, in the cases where you do eat meat, are you fairly confident that the cow had a net positive life, net happy life? When, when I do eat meat, um, well, you know, in the past, you talk about in the past, my past record of eating meat. Sure. And current, yeah, if you are currently doing it. Well, no, well, there have been loads of times where I've eaten meat where I haven't been confident at all. Okay, so, so wait a minute. Okay, so 
then the other thing I would encourage you is to stop eating the meat unless you actually are uh, fairly confident that the cow lived a net happy life. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I've, I've, I've recently adopted this outlook. Great. So, have you eaten meat since you've adopted this outlook? Yeah, I have. Okay, and when you ate that meat, were you fairly confident that the cow had a net happy life? Uh, well, I, I at least knew that the it was free range. Okay, but now we're, now you're going back to free range again. So then, when you say free range, right, can you be fairly confident that that entails a net happy life? Well, I I think it like I think so, but I obviously okay don't on know. the basis of what I'm not sure of what on the basis of just what I my the the impression I get from free range and the basis of your impression that you get from free range. Yeah. Okay. So, do you see why this is problematic? <laughs> what does he think that free range even is? What, what I don't is what understand. Is, so so free range is giving are you saying free range when you see the label free range you're getting some sort of impression and this impression is leading to some fairly confident entailment that the cow is a net positive life net happy life it's yeah he just impression thinks of... they're outside chilling all the time like whatever like they go they go around they figure out where they want but, but like josh that's not couches. really the case or... I don't, i'm not care i don't care if it's the case why do you think i give a shit if it's the case What's the impression is what I'm asking. What's the impression that you're getting that I just is told you? you what it is. Well, look, I see I'm not asking around, you, Josh. I'm, I'm asking ask... Danny. I'm answering for him. Why are you answering for him? Because I understand the impression that he gets. Well, that's some crazy mind reading, buddy, my dude. Okay. I don't think it takes... Look, I don't think it takes any fucking mind All reading. Right. It's just what's, a what's sort the of inductive Tell inference me, for what most people get from it. He thinks that cows are just wandering around, basically chilling most of the time. They come back to a place where they need to fucking eat food. They just, like, have chill lives. Yeah, That's we've, what he we've fucking been thinks. over this. Did you come in late? We've, we've been over that. Okay, so we've been... We've you're, been you're just saying that... You said that he doesn't know, but I'm not... I'm ch telling you what the fucking impression is, whether or not he knows okay. is, okay. is so different from okay, what the... Okay, great. That's great, Josh. I'm proud of you. So, Josh... Proud of me for so what? The issue is Proud of so me for what? Josh, Josh, what kind of Josh, retarded Josh. rhetorical bullshit was that? What are you proud of me Josh, for? I'm, proud I'm telling of you. you what I'm the fucking impression is. I'm pr you're cute. Pr for what? I just, Josh, what? I just want to take your cheeks and pinch your cheeks and put it in my. What gun. are you proud of me for? I'm, I, I don't know. I just like you. I just, I, I think you're like this cute little Josh. Okay. Boy, you know, like you're. Yeah, I love this is you. Some you know? fucking yeah. ridiculous you're rhetorical so, nonsense. You're so cute. I want just to fuck pinch off. you in my coffee, Josh. All right, so listen. So the like, getting back on the topic. So the the issue we've already been through that. So the issue with um, that is that we, we really it's called into question as to whether that actually entails that at all. And there seem to be a lot of people who are saying that free range doesn't mean that at all. That it really is not that different from conventional. And I don't know who's right or not. And I don't think um, neither myself nor Danny nor Josh knows that that's right or not. So unless you can say something other, something more substantive than it's my gut feeling you matter or not, let's give me something tangible that it's actually the case that it is differentiated from conventional and that's a kind of substantial way. Well, yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard people claiming that it isn't like that, but I, I still I still think that the majority of cases free range is like animals do have a happy life, and I base that on my observation of seeing Wait, cows. Like, has I, you ever been to one of these farms? Danny. I, I, see, oh, loads yeah. of, I see loads of wait, cows in wait, the field. Wait, wait, wait Danny. Mary posted videos and photos for you. Can you take a look at those quickly? Sure, but I, I can look at them, but I have to remember this is not in the US, so I think the regulations around free range is... Right, but you haven't even looked into them. Wait, what did you just say about USA? Well, he's saying that your examples are from the USA. And that okay, they're the same in, in like some... Australia or the UK. There's not. There's yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, he said he all he's saying is that he thinks the UK would be better. But, but to, to be clear, he a, hasn't looked at the regulations, nor has he even 
looked at any farms. This is just kind of a supposition. I I also have the impression that the regulations are better in the UK. Yeah, but but sort of on on what basis? It's the the same. It's just my impression. Right, but what what do you mean by an impression? Like something had to bring well, that impression, it's right? A, it's, a, it's like a mental model that I've developed over my life. Right, but what do you mean by a mental model? Yeah, but what do you well, mean by like, mental well, What is with all this fucking nonsense skepticism from you fucking people? It's like fairly clear what he means, right? He means that there's just, like, he thinks that the best explanation for why they make a difference between free range and not free range is that the animals are treated substanti- substantively different. Maybe he doesn't know that. Maybe, you know, he doesn't have a, a great justification. But that's what he fucking means. Just what the fuck is with the skepticism? What's wrong with you people? Well, that's the... I'm pushing on whether or not he has justification for it. I'm willing to grant him that he thinks that way. But I'm, yeah, I don't I'm think anyone of... was tripped up by, by what he's trying to mean by that. They were trying to, we're trying to get at if, he, if he's actually justified in having that belief. And I'm just, like, curious on, like, why he has that belief or, like, what brought him to that belief, I guess. One thing, too, is if we can come to an understanding of what it is that he's using to justify that view, it gives us a starting point to begin providing evidence to the contrary. But you weren't asking for the justification, which are, he already said he didn't have, so you're just being assholes now, just being redundant assholes, right? He already said he didn't have a justification he didn't know. But you're asking, well, what does a mental, mental model mean? What does this stuff mean? He's just, think, you're asking what he means. Yeah, I think those Which, are interesting questions. If you're already, if you're not skeptical, if you know what he means, then what the fuck are you doing? I don't know what he means. Well, I just told you what he means. He just thinks it's more likely that the reason for the distinction... Yeah. Okay, I guess I can see where you're coming from. Like, I guess that's sure. what most people believe, and the, right? And the question, and the question is, in virtue, in virtue of what is it more likely? Is it is it in virtue of something that he's intuiting? Is it virtue in virtue of he has some evidence? Is it in virtue of anything? What what is it in virtue of that it's more likely? He thinks the label is best explained by the differences in treatment. Okay, and that's what we're pushing back on. That there seems to be just as much reason to think that the label, it is not the case that the label, just the difference in treatment, but the treatment that would result in a net happy life, because that's also required for his view. It's not just that is, there's a substantive difference in treatment. It's also, it has to commiserate to a net happy life. Yeah, so I mean, look, I, I don't know what else more to say. Um, only thing I would say is just like, yeah, just try to get a clearer, more tangible view. Try to get some evidence or justification to make it to build the case that when you see free range, it really does mean that the cows have a net happy life instead of, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have admitted you don't have a justification, so I, I don't know what more to say. Um, yeah, I, 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 like, I, I believe that it would be immoral to eat me unless I was like very like fairly sure about it right um and 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 listen like that that's that's fine so I what I would just encourage you to do is to be fairly actually be fairly sure about it when you do eat me I'm curious if this guy like actually only eats "quote unquote" free range meat because a lot of people just he, bring he that does, up. We've already like, established he doesn't. We, we, he oh, doesn't so why would we even talk about? He doesn't know what farm meat comes from. I've, I've, yeah, I've eaten meat in the past where I haven't, where it hasn't been free range, and sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes that's been in times where I, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong, and other times when I probably thought, oh, it probably is wrong, but I had a moment of weakness. Have you ever watched like slaughterhouse footage or like anything like this in regards to uh, whether they're free range, grass fed, anything like that? Because they posted a video in regards to it's like literally like the best case scenario of the quote unquote most humane way of slaughter. Um, earlier, I can DM it to you if you'd like. Um, but it's just uh, there's not much difference in regards to the slaughter of this cow, and then in comparison to like a factory farm cow, 
um, I think that's something also important you have to take into consideration, and also the environmental okay. impact, of course. Okay, I'll, have, I'll watch the video. Thank you. All right, well, listen, um, sorry if I gave you too much of a hard time. Um, it was good talking to you. Nice to talk to you, too.